I want to continue to explore this idea of two by two contingency tables and independence and association. So I'm going to look at another example. We're going to consider the following sample of 25 mathematical statistics participants. Okay, so this is the 23 people from our class plus myself, the instructor, and then the grader. And the question is, is there a relationship between hair color and eye color? Okay, so I divided everybody based on whether they had dark hair or light hair. So dark brown and black were dark hairs, blonde, uh, light brown, and red were considered to be light hairs. And then I also split everybody based on whether they had light eye colors or dark, air, uh, dark eye colors. Dark eyes are black or brown, and then light eye colors are blue, green, hazel, gray, etc. Okay, so we have uh, that we would like to compare uh, some of these conditional probabilities. We want to compare the probability of dark eyes given dark hair, which in this case there were 12 people with both dark eyes and dark hair, 16 people with dark hair, so that was 0.75. We want to compare that to the probability of dark eyes given light hair. There were actually no people with dark eyes and light hair in this sample, and so that was a probability of zero. And so we're asking, are those two probabilities different, okay? Uh, but we could have also made a, another comparison. We could have said, looked at the probability of dark hair given dark eyes. Okay, so there were four people who had dark hair and dark eyes. Sorry, there were 12 people who had dark hair and dark eyes over a total of 12 people who had dark eyes. That is a probability of one. And we can compare that to the probability of dark hair given light eyes. Okay, so here we had four people with dark hair and light eye colors, and then divide by the 13 people who had a light eye color, that was a probability of 0 0.308. Okay, so we can compare one of these, uh, these two probabilities, and, and we are trying to see if they're statistically different from each other. Okay, so ways that we can state the null hypothesis. Okay, so we can state the null hypothesis as eye color is independent of hair color. So the way that we can say that in mathematical notation is that the probability of dark eyes given dark hair is equal to the probability of dark eyes given light hair. Okay, that's also equal to the probability of just then dark eyes. It's independent of whether you have dark hair or light hair. So remember that definition, that mathematical definition of independence, okay? But we don't have to compare dark eyes. We could do the probability of light eyes given dark hair equal to the probability of light eyes given light hair. Either one of those is going to show that eye color is independent of hair color. But we could ask, is hair color independent of eye color? In those cases, we would say the probability of dark hair given light eyes is equal to the probability of dark hair given dark eyes. Or we could say that the probability of light hair given light eyes is equal to the probability of light hair given dark eyes. In both of those cases, we're looking at, essentially, that's the probability of, say, dark hair which is independent of eye color, okay? So here you'll notice that we're using the mathematical definition of independence, okay? If our probability of our event is not dependent on that condition, dark hair, light hair, okay, uh, then, then dark eyes would be independent of dark hair or light hair, okay? 
What's important to understand is, is that in each one of these, okay, in each one of these equalities for the null hypothesis, we have switched the conditional because we're asking whether one is dependent on the other or independent. So the thing that changes here is the conditional, okay? So we have dark hair changes to light hair, okay? Or light eyes changes to dark eyes. It's important to understand that we cannot, cannot, state this as the probability of dark eyes given dark hair is equal to the probability of light eyes given dark hair, okay? We have not switched the conditional, so we're not showing independence there, okay? So we cannot state it that way. Um, I have a, a fun little passage that I like to use to kind of illustrate this. Um, it's from an excerpt from Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll in 1865. Okay, so uh, of course you're getting a liberal arts education here, so I should bring in some literature to the class. I'm sure that when you're in your literature classes, they bring in some statistics. Okay, so uh, this the excerpt goes, then you should say what you mean, the March hare went on. I do, Alice hastily replied, at least, at least I mean what I say. That's the same thing, you know. Not the same thing a bit, said the Hatter. Why, you might just as well say that I see what I eat is the same as I eat what I see. You might as well just say, added the March Hare, that I like what I get is the same thing as I get what I like. And you might just as well say, added the Dormouse, which seemed to be talking in his sleep, that I breathe when I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. And I think that illustrates how you can't just switch these around. You, you have to have the conditionals are the things that switch. You can't have the probability of the events be the things that switch. Okay. Another way to illustrate this is we have a bunch of statements about colorblindness. Okay, which of the following statements are equivalent? Colorblindness is more common among men than women. That's a true statement. Men are more common among colorblind people than women. It's actually also a true statement. Um, so these two are actually equivalent to each other. Most men are colorblind. That's actually not true. It's What's true is that most colorblind people are men. Okay, and so you can see that those three are equivalent, but you cannot say that most men are colorblind. Okay, so let's go back to our example of hair and eye color. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this two by two contingency table, I'm gonna fill in the expected frequencies, okay? So I'm gonna get things like 16 times 12 over 25 gives me expected frequency of 7.68. But if I was to do nine times 12 over 25, the expected frequency is 4.32, okay? Um, if I do nine times 13 over 25, the expected frequency is 4.68. And then if I was to do four times 13 over 25, the expected frequency is 8.32. So if I wanna run a chi-squared test, then uh, what I get here is that 12 minus 7.68 squared over 7.68 plus zero minus 4.32 squared over 4.32 plus 4 minus 8.32 squared over 8.32 plus 9 minus 4.68 squared over 4.68, that that total is 12.98. So the chi-squared there is 12.98, okay? Uh, again, the rejection region has not changed, okay? It doesn't change from what we had last time because the degrees of freedom did not change, okay? So the rejection region in this case was that the chi-squared needed to be bigger than 3.84. So yes, we can reject uh, the null hypothesis, okay? In fact, if you were to look this up on the chart, you could see that the p-value would have to be less than 0.005 because it's actually off the chart. 
If you compute that in R, that's going to be P equals 0 0.0003. So yes, uh, we have a chi-squared of 12.98, so we can reject the null hypothesis. Okay, we're saying that hair and eye color are dependent. Okay, and this is actually connected to melanin production. Okay, so we have a biological explanation for the dependence of hair and eye color. I just want to note at the bottom of this handout, okay, that uh, I said that the homework was going to be on a worksheet. Okay, in fact, uh, you need to do one problem from the book. Okay, and then I've given you another problem about tumors and cell phones below to do as well. So it's one problem from the book and then one that's given here.